Now we're going to talk about horizontal asymptotes. Now with horizontal asymptotes, you know, remember with vertical asymptotes, it's a vertical line that the graph sort of approaches and hugs. Okay. With the horizontal asymptotes, the same thing. It's a horizontal line that the graph hugs as it approaches at the ends. Right? So the graph is going to go there. Yeah. Right, so, um, so we have a horizontal asymptote if the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity equals a number L. Okay. So the requirement is that this equals a number instead of, so it cannot equal infinity, but if it equals anything else, then we have a horizontal asymptote. Then we have a horizontal um, asymptote. So it could doesn't have to be positive infinity. So if x approaches negative infinity, then we have a limit, and we have a, a number as our answer of the limit. Then we have a horizontal asymptote there too. Okay. So so if this if um, the graph satisfies either of these either of these um, requirements, then f of x we'll have a horizontal asymptote. Okay. Sorry, the screen's over there, so make sure that I write within the box. Okay. Uh, y equals L. Now, the difference with a the difference between a vertical and horizontal asymptote, besides the fact that it's horizontal and vertical, um, is that a graph can cross a horizontal asymptote, like in the center of a graph, but not at the extreme ends. So with horizontal asymptotes, we're looking at the behavior of the graphs at the extreme ends, okay, at the left end and at the right end. With vertical asymptotes, the graph can never cross its line, okay. So with vertical asymptotes, the graph can never cross the vertical asymptote, but with horizontal asymptotes, the graph can cross it. And sometimes it will, and we'll see an example in which, uh, we'll see an example in which the graph will actually cross the horizontal asymptote. So it's okay if it crosses. What matters is the end. So as long as the extreme left end and right end doesn't cross the horizontal asymptote, then it is a horizontal asymptote. Okay. So um, let's make this clear with a example. So f of x is equal to four x over x plus two, and I was. Okay, and the question is, find the asymptotes of this function. So let's start with the vertical asymptote, something that we know. So with the vertical asymptote, this is a rational function. Therefore, we're going to have an asymptote if the bottom is equal to zero, but, but not the top. Okay, so what we do is we set the bottom to zero, and we see that at x equals negative two, the bottom is equal to zero. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two. Now we're going to look for horizontal asymptotes. So we're going to take a look at the extreme left end and at the extreme right end of um, the graph. So we see that the top and the bottom both have the same degree, one and one. Therefore, the answer is going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients. One over four, which is four. Now let's do it as x approaches negative infinity. Same thing here, the leading coefficients are the same. So, say we forgot if it matters if we're approaching positive or negative infinity. That's okay. We see that we can simply plug it in, right? So, negative infinity over infinity, or over negative infinity, both the top and the bottom are negative. Sorry, both the top and the bottom are negative. Therefore, the answer can be positive. So, since these are the same degree, both the top and the bottom, the answer is still the ratio of leading coefficients, and the negative sign here doesn't matter. So it's so forth. Well, it matters that it's telling us that we're going to negative infinity. Right, so if I were to do a quick sketch here, um, what I would see is, sorry, I squeeze it in here. So say, okay. Okay. you sheep, I give up. Okay, so, what we're going to see here is um, one, two, three, four, one, two. It's a very small graph. Okay, let me pull it down here. Okay, what we're going to see is that um, it's going to look something like um, 
something that has here and here two asymptotes. Now the question is, well, is it going to be here or here or here or here? You can use limits to figure that out. And it actually turns out to be like this. So it should be in this and this portion of the graph. There you go, that's the answer. So we can see that there's two asymptotes. Um, x equals negative 2. And y equals 4. Two asymptotes. Okay. That's the first example. Now another example. Okay. So say um, f of x is equal to 2x over x squared plus 1. That's a 2 here. So 2x over x squared plus 1. Let's do the same thing here. So is it going to be a vertical asymptote? So the question is, can this ever equal 0? The answer is no, right? Because if we bring this over, we have something squared equals negative 1. That's never going to happen. So, because this is always going to be positive, so no solution. So there's going to be no vertical asymptote. Now let's take a look here at the limits. Okay, so at the extreme end, what happens? Well, we see that the, new, that the um, degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator. Therefore, the bottom is going to approach infinity faster than the top is. So therefore, the bottom is going to approach infinity faster than before. Sorry. <laughs> because the bottom is approaching infinity faster, the answer is going to be zero. There you go. And what about the other case, if x approaches negative infinity? Well, does it matter? No, right? It's still going to be zero. It's just that the bottom is going to... It doesn't matter because it's approaching zero. From It's just a case... Um, it's just a question... Sorry. The question is whether we're going to approach zero from the left side or from the right side of the number line. Phew. I had a brain freeze there. Sorry about that. Well, then the graph is going to look something like this. Right. So, um... I drew in an x-axis there, in case you couldn't see it. So, here, take a look here. It crosses a, we're, we're, crosses a horizontal asymptote. Does it matter? No. Right, we're fine. The graph is allowed to cross asymptotes if it's horizontal. What matters is at the ends. So, in this case, it's okay if it crosses here. The ends matter. So, as you can see, it hugs the x-axis and it hugs the x-axis here. So, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, but x-axis. One next example, don't go away yet. And this is actually pretty interesting, so how much time do I have? Okay. I think this is pretty cool. Take a look. So, you know what? Hopefully, we can read this. It's not too small. Okay, so if you can't read it, it's going to be um, 4 times x squared. Wait, that's a 2 this. x squared plus 3. My fees are terrible. Okay, all over 3x. And the top has a square root sign over it. Okay, so the square root of 4x squared plus 3 all over 3x. <laughs> so let's do the same thing. Um, we're going to take a look at the... Okay, question 1. Is there a vertical asymptote? Yes, right? Because um, if we set the bottom to 0, does it work? 3x equals 0, x is equal to 0, so we have a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And the top doesn't equal 0 when the bottom equals 0. Because right? 0 plus 3 is the square root of 3. Okay, we're good. Now for the horizontal asymptotes. Okay. Um, so, well, let's take a look here. The degree of the top is, is it 2? No, it's not. And the reason is because we have a square root sign over it. So it's 2, so we have to take the square root of x squared, which is going to be x. So the degree of the top is 1, and the degree of the bottom is 1. Okay, do you see that? Because this is 1 half, right? So 1 half times 2 is equal to 1. So the degree of the top and the bottom, all they're saying, they're both 1. And therefore, we look at the leading coefficients. Okay, now again, don't forget that. Don't forget that we have a square root here. So the leading coefficient is not 4 over 3, it's the square root of 4 over 3, which is equal to 2 over 3. 
Okay, so this is the answer. Okay. Now let's take a look at what happens to the other side. Mmm, kind of tricky here. We have, yes, the coefficients of the top and the bottom are the same, so it shouldn't matter, right? But in this case, um, so it's, the answer should still be two thirds. Not quite though. We have a square root sign here. That's affecting our answer. So let's take a look at what happens when we have a square root sign. Okay, so this is equal to this, is it? Well, let's think about it. If we have one squared, okay, no, let's say two. If we have a two squared, that's four. Take the square of that, it's two. If we have negative two and we square that, it's four. And if we take the square root sign, it's still two. So effectively, this is like an absolute sign, right? And the answer is always going to be positive, no matter what x actually is, no matter what x actually is. Well, I really cannot talk today. Um, so another sheet of paper here. So we're going to factor out the x squared. Okay, so if we factor out the x squared, what we have here is x squared to take the square root of that times the square root of 4 plus 3 over x squared. And the same thing in the denominator. Okay, so this thing we saw that we can write this as the absolute value. And everything else stays the same. Okay, so now we need to cancel out this thing. So we need to cancel out the absolute value of x over x. Okay, so when x is greater than 0, then this thing is equal to what? This thing is equal to 1, because both the top and the bottom are positive. But when x is equal to negative 0, when x is smaller than 0, when, what is this equal to? Well, the top is going to be positive. The bottom is going to be negative. It's the same number, but something positive or something negative. Therefore, it's going to be negative 1. So this is going to equal negative 1. Okay, so um, we saw here that so if we're going to positive infinity, we saw that the answer is going to be 2 thirds. So let's confirm that. Okay, so it's messy, but this and this is going to cancel. It's going to give us 1. So what we have is this thing here, all right? So this is going to go to zero, right? Because there is an x term and a denominator and x to approaching infinity. So we have square root of four over three and equals two thirds. Okay, good. It matches up what we had before. Now, what about the other case? So if the limit of the same equation, okay, this thing here. As we approach negative infinity, and we want to cross out, cancel out these two terms. If we cancel them out, we have a negative sign, right? Based on this here. here. Okay, because this thing's negative. So, what we have left is negative square root of 4 plus 3 over x squared over 3. And this is going to approach 0, right? So then we have the negative square root of 4 over 3, which gives us negative 2 thirds. Ah, so this is kind of interesting. Well, right, um, okay, so uh, the first limit, as we approach positive infinity, gives us 2 thirds. So we expect to have a ver we expect to have a horizontal, horizontal asymptotes at y equals 2 thirds. Okay, same thing over here, but different though. Um, if we approach negative infinity, then we expect to have a, another horizontal asymptote at negative two-thirds. So this graph actually has two horizontal asymptotes. Now, I think it's interesting, I don't know about you. <laughs> probably not. Um, but here you go. There's a graph. Um, it's not very clear, I apologize. I probably should, make it, should have made it bigger, but if you can't see, um, this is the x-axis right there. Okay. 
and this is a y axis. So we we said that um, there is a vertical asymptote at uh, x equals zero, y axis. Yes, and we also said that there, we also said that there's going to be a horizontal asymptote at y equals two thirds, yes, and one at y equals negative two thirds. So y equals negative two thirds, y equals two thirds. It's a graph with two asymptotes. Okay, so that's all, that's all I have. See you next lesson.